Hi, and welcome back to Simple Home and School. Today I'm going to show you what my daughter will be using for her fourth grade year for the 2023-2024 school year. If you're interested in seeing anything in more depth, just let me know and I'll dive into that. So let's start with language arts. I showed some of these things in our family subjects video already. You can link back to that to see what we'll be doing as a family. So I'm not showing our history, music, poetry, all of our science, all of our art. That's all in the family subject video. Um, so let me jump into what we'll be using for language arts. So she is fully doing cursive. She knows how to do cursive already, but we're just kind of practicing cursive with not tracing it now and more just copying like copy work. So we'll be using draw right now. I got these used off of eBay for about uh, $5 a piece. So what she'll be doing is on day one, she, so Monday, I'll have her write this in print and she can draw the picture. And then on Tuesdays, I'll have her rewrite it in cursive. Her print is very sloppy because she likes to rush. So I'm trying to get her to slow down with print, so that's why I'm having her do print in cursive. And I got these on clearance on Rainbow Resource for about $2 a piece. And they just have a blank top and smaller lined pages. And you don't really need to get this. You can use regular paper or a composition notebook. But I thought I might as well, since they were the same price as a composition. Though she's in fourth grade, she's an advanced speller. Um, I'm going to give the sixth grade a try. And if it's too easy, we'll bump her up to se seventh grade. This is Rod and Staff Spelling by Sound and Structure. This will be the first year we're using it, but I'm really excited to try it out. It has good phonetic practice and it has good, um, word usage practice on the pages. So this would be a lesson. So on Monday, I'd have her write each word three times. Tuesday, I would have her do part A, which is the phonics practice. Wednesday, I would have her do part B, which is good dictionary skills and kind of analogies. And um, Thursday, I would have her do part C, and then Friday would be the test. You can see each section's pretty short and sweet. I don't know how long they're going to take, but I can't imagine them taking more than 10 minutes um, to do. So we'll do a quick look at that. And I can do a further flip through on this later. This is the teacher's manual. It's just a copy of the page with the answers. So if you're confident that you could figure out the answers yourself, then you would not need to get a teacher manual. This is a very budget friendly option. I got these off of eBay for about $10 total. I think brand new, you can get this set for $20, which is still reasonable. And then just, you know, the student book for 10, these are hardcover. So these are reusable. So each of my three children will be able to use them, which makes it even more budget friendly. And I will just have her write the answers in a composition book. Also for language arts, I have shown this many times, we'll be using Just Right. This um, edition, the th book three, is extremely skinny, and I'd be surprised if it takes us past Christmas time. So I really need something else to fill the year, and I really wanted her to be able to start working on summary writing. Um, so after that, this isn't summary writing, but this is a more focused writing where they're pulling... Um, keywords and whatnot out of literature and to me that's pretty close to summary writing so we'll be trying the IEW all things fun and fascinating I've never done anything from IEW before um, but some of my friends just love it so I want to give this a try and come the new year once we start this I will give a review of what I'm thinking about IEW and if it's the right fit for us and this is just one of the theme-based writings. Um, you can go on their website and they have a chart um, that suggests just the order that you go in for their writing. So I just picked one for her level. Also for language arts, we'll be doing vocab workshop level orange. This is the one that is connected to online games. 
I got this used at Thrift Books for five bucks. The first two chapters were done. That doesn't bother me for getting it at this price because they're usually about 20 brand new. Um, let's turn to a new lesson. So here, Unit 5. So we're going to be going through this pretty slowly, probably about three days a week. So we might not even finish it this year. But So this would be day one. We would read this with all the um, vocab words and context. Day two, we will sit down together and we will go over the definitions of the words. And you can see that you can listen to the, how they're pronounced online on the website. Um, and then day three, we will do the match the meaning. And then the next week on day one, we'll practice synonyms and antonyms. And then the next day... We would just do this page and then this page. So just really taking it slowly, pretty much one page a day. I had my daughter kind of peruse through this and it did look kind of actually challenging for her, which is good. I want her to be challenged. I think vocab's really important. Um, with as much as she reads, as she sometimes gloss over glosses over the words that she doesn't know. Um, and just keeps going and kind of figures out what they are in context. But I really want her to get a good solid foundation of vocab. I really liked this program because it was it really dives deep into the words and their meaning. So we'll be using that. This will be our second year using first language lessons by the well-trained mind. We're really excited to dive into this. Just a reminder, this has poetry memorization. You don't have to do that, but my daughters love doing the poetry mem memorization. This is an open and go program. It tells the teacher exactly what to say. Oh, let's do this lesson. It tells the teacher exactly what to say and then what you should respond with together. What the teacher says, look at your workbook. This is there. And then it tells exactly what the student should say back. It has the diagrams laid out and then it has exactly what the diagram should look like with what the, teach, what the student should write in their book. So this is a very easy open and go program. I love this, it's very thorough. Last thing for language arts is reading comprehension. Reading comprehension for me is the most important part of the language arts program. I think my children get a lot of spending time with the comprehension, diving into each book and really understanding the themes and the characters and what they're learning. Um, as I've said before, as much as I can, I find free um, comprehension guides that are very thorough and in-depth. There's a lot of free comprehension guides out there, but a lot of them are not very good. So if you spend your time Googling and you just Google, um, say, Island of the Blue Dolphins, free comprehension guide, um, you can often find a lot, mostly since the pandemic, since public schools had to publish stuff online. I cut and paste what I like and use that. So let's go through the books she's going to be reading this year. First book is Love That Dog. She's going to be doing that by herself. This is more of, I don't know if it's called like free verse type book, but she'll go through this in one week. She'll be doing that by herself. I bought an Evan Moore Understanding Poetry book. And let me see if I have this in the back. And I copied the pages you're allowed to do that. Um, and I just have her doing a couple pages in between each book just kind of for a break. So we have Love That Dog. We have Nim's Island. Now, all of these books are under her reading level. But I want her, this more to be a focus on reading but also comprehension. Um, so then a couple poetry, 21 Balloons. I got all these books at the thrift store. Uh, Robin Hood I don't have. I'll get that at the library. Island of the Blue Dolphins. Um, the Boy Who Harnessed at the Wind. I'll get at the library. The Sign of the Beaver. Love that book. And On the Banks of Plum Creek and By the Shores of Silver Lake or Little House on the Prairie books. I forgot to pull them down. We're trying to get through that whole series probably by the end of next year. So I'm going to flip through this really quick. So Love That Dog. I got this for free online. It's very good guide. I thought 
the teacher did a great job making it really comprehensive and looking at different reading strategies. I just googled love that dog free comprehension questions and got this unit study. And then here's some of the poetry pages. And then here's Nims Island, same thing. I googled free Nims Island study. I didn't find much, but I found this. I think it was on Scholastic. So I read and I made my own comprehension guide, which this was a short book, so it didn't take that long to do. And then I got this for free. These are just a bunch of different activities to go with Nims Island, and then we'll be watching the movie with it. And then some more poetry pages. Uh, 21 Balloons I got from Veritas Press. Um, I got these secondhand, this secondhand for $9. And I'll be able to use it for all three kids. So that's only $3 a piece. And then I got Robin Hood also for $9 from eBay. And we'll be able to use it for all kids. And this was another Veritas Press guide. As you can see, I've kind of moved away from Memoria Press and I've been using a lot more Veritas Press. Um, we just needed a little change from Memoria Press. The Island of the Blue Dolphins. I got this one for free. Um, this is by, you can get this on Teacher Paid Teacher or you can go to Read Novel Studies. I'll say it again, Read Novel Studies. And this is their free sample study. And this is a very comprehensive um, guide and it has all forms of language arts in it, which my daughter doesn't need to do because we already have stuff for that. Um, so I did cross off a handful of stuff I didn't feel like she needed to do. And let's keep moving on. Um, the Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. I am writing that curriculum myself. I didn't find anything online that I loved, so I'm spending my summer reading through it and writing my own curriculum guide. And then... The Sign of the Beaver, same thing. I googled The Sign of the Beaver, free comprehension questions, and got a great guide. I did add a writing assignment to it and some of my own questions because I like to pre-read the books. And then she just has some more poetry. And then for the Little House on the Prairie books, this is why I'm doing the IEW um, on the banks of Plum Creek. After each chapter, I'm just going to have her write a summary of the chapter and this one as well. After each chapter, I'll have her write a summary. Moving on to geography. I had a really hard time paying $50 for a geography program. I felt like that was kind of the standard rate and they were all kind of this looking for the same thing. So what I did is if you know Paige Hudson, who does the elemental science books, she has a website. And if you Google Paige Hudson Elementary Science Geography Study, she has a free geography curriculum on her website. And it looks a lot like all the other curriculums that you'll look up that are $50. <laughs> so what I decided to do was to print hers. I made a couple modifications and then I picked up some geography books at the thrift store or you can get them from the library. My daughter started it this year. But what um, Paige Hudson gives you is um, this page. Um, I changed that because I wanted to do a different topic. But this is your state. And then on the back, it has some information about the state. I added my own Digging Deeper page uh, where she'll study a famous person or a landmark and dive deeper into that for a day. And then I have her researching a national park from that state. And I kind of have an outline of what I want her to do each day. And they just have that for every state. And once you finish a region, then it has just a region quiz um, just on the capitals, matching the capitals to the state and the abbreviations for the state. And that's just it. It's pretty short and sweet. But the books I'm using are the 50 states book which is a really fun book it's dk state by state atlas and the scholastic atlas of the united states they all have different information and then i did grab this uh dover coloring book so she is then able to color in the rivers color the state bird the proper way and color the state flower and tree the proper way which she has really enjoyed doing for science we're doing um a bird unit the the good and the beautiful bird unit together as a family on fridays but my daughter is doing 
um, master books. I love master book science programs. So um, she'll be doing the master books, God's Design for Life by herself. Um, these are pretty short and sweet lessons. She will be doing these on her own. So here's your reading one, two, and then I believe this is for upper kids. So sh she might skip that. So it's two or three pages of reading. There's some questions and then there's coinciding pages in the workbook, which is just two pages of kind of comprehension and experiments. And I have a science notebook. I will just have her be writing her answers in that notebook so we can reuse that for all kids. And lastly, math, I have her going through a division cumin book just to practice um, division. My kids don't always love flashcards, so they don't mind doing the workbooks. So she does like one page a day. And then she'll be finishing up, she's in fourth grade, but she'll be finishing up Math Mammoth 4B, and she'll be moving on to Math Mammoth 5. We have loved Math Mammoth. Um, I think I have a video already. So I sit down and I do read the lesson. Let's not do a review lesson. I read the lesson with her. Here's a reading of the lesson. And then I do the first two or three with her. And if she understands it, I let her do the rest of the lesson by herself. So let's go to another chapter. Um, so like here, I read the instructions with her. We would do these together. And if she understands it, I'd have her complete the rest of the page. And then I check it right away. This is a mastery based program. So, you know, a whole chapter is going to be on fractions and then they have a chapter test on fractions and then they have a cum cumulative review of everything they've learned. So it's not spiral in any of the way. It's not like Saxon. So that is what my daughter will be using for the fourth grade year. And that's not including the family subjects. If you have any questions or want to see a flip through of anything more extensively, let me know.